within, I'd probably say less than a year, I went from homeless to you know, making like 60K. I, I cannot just punch the clock for 30 years and call it a career or a life. That's not gonna be me. And that's one of the things for me that, that I've never wanted to live with was regret. In order to grow in life, you you have to put yourself out there. When you were, I don't know, 17, 18, 19, whatever, like late teens, you ended up homeless. I never thought I would be in that kind of a situation. There's fear, there's doubt. What I had hoped was gonna go was not going. It's a time that, you know, you dig deep and find out who you are, who you spend the majority of your time with. You could probably say you're gonna end up like them or you're gonna be stuck there. Elevate your mindset, elevate your personality and become a person of value. You get into a negative headspace very easily. When you get into that low headspace, it brings you to low inertia. Until the last 10, 20 years realize how damaging yes. negative self-talk is, even as a joke. Practicing gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude, always. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Vibe with Humanity podcast. I'm your host, Trevor. Today's guest is Matt Cron. Matt went from a homeless teenager, essentially, <laughs> yeah. to scaling a multi-million dollar trucking company. So today we're going to hear a little bit about his work techniques, his personal philosophies, his mindset, and what that story looked like. And I think you'll be able to see, oh, he did this one step at a time. This wasn't handed to him. He didn't get lucky. And our intention with this show is to show you what those steps look like. So Matt, I appreciate you coming to do this. Hey, thank you for having me. And, I, and I'm grateful and uh, uh, I take a lot of uh, honor and pride in sharing this seat with the same kind of people that you've had before me and uh, you're gonna have after me. Well, to start, what what kind of things make you passionate? What are you happy about in life? What, like when you're not working and maybe the kids and the wife are going for groceries and you got six hours to yourself, whatever, what do you want to do with that time? Well, I don't get six hours. Myself. <laughs> as soon as I said uh, that, I, I thought we're going to just I don't get, But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just passionate about life uh, in, in general. Uh, a lot of things, um, you know, that I'm passionate about now are things that uh, maybe I had lack of in my life. So uh, uh, being a good father, a uh, good husband, um, you know, uh, those kind of things. Are, you love being a dad, man. It's so cool to watch. I didn't have a dad for a lot of years. Um, and, and even if I did, but, uh, you know, uh, I've had people in my life tell me they're like, you know, your kids hit the dad lottery. I mean, they're, 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 they're lucky. You That's know? how I feel, man. I've and, called you before, yeah. man. One's sick. The other one hates me. I yeah. can't do this. And you're yeah. like, oh man, this is the best life ever. Yeah. Two no, kids. One yeah. pooped on me. I love yeah. it. No, it's, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, you know, not everybody's fortunate enough to do so. And, uh, and no, I, I take it as a challenge, and, and, and uh, I think it's high reward. Um, of course, there are frustrations, yeah, but no, I'm just really passionate about, um, you know, kind of breaking the cycle. Um, you know, uh, I come from a, well, I came from a two-parent household, but there's a, a period of time, a lot of years, that one was vacated. Um, so I, I try to reach back to those times and how I felt and, and how I can improve and, uh, you know, teach my kids uh, lessons that weren't taught to me. Um, you know, obviously throughout that time, I, I learned a lot on my own. Um, so I, I'd like to, you know, share that and, and help my kids so they can get um, uh, a lot further ahead faster than I did, put it that way. When you were, I don't know, 17, 18, 19, whatever, like yeah. late teens, you ended up with, you know, homeless, like yeah. no place to live. And um, I know one of your bigger personal philosophies is like, hey, when something's not working, there's two things I love. Yeah. When life hits with pressure, you push back with equal yes. pressure. But 100%. another one is when something's not working in life anywhere, you try something different. 100%. So when you ended up at that point as a teenager where you don't have a place to live and you're living yeah. in cars and kind of couch surfing yeah. and things like that, what was that moment like where you realized this isn't working and I need to try something different? Real dark, you know, and, I, and, <laughs> yeah, I and, 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 and that's not a bad thing, you know, uh, um, uh, because you know, we, we all experience we, we all experience things differently, and emotions is what sets us apart than from robots, right? I mean, but when I mean dark, it's it's it you know lonely. There's fear. There's doubt. There's you know uh, what I had hoped was going to go was not going. It's a time that you know you dig deep, I guess, and find out who you are, right, as a person individually, and what you're capable of. But trying something new, uh, in the sense that you know. Um, you know, you don't want to give up per se, but uh, you want to, um, you know, Winston Churchill, you know, he says, uh, uh, you know, well, I'm going to butcher this. It, it, he, uh, it's um, success is when you fail and then try again and fail 
but don't lose enthusiasm. Huh. Right? Yeah. So, so you know, failure is part of all of it, right? First attempt in learning, F-A-I-L. So when you fail, you find out what you need to do different the next time. It's not an end game, right? It's uh, effort never dies. It's not the end, right? You keep on going. Um, so at that know. point when you had basically failed at, at having a place live. What did you try? So, uh, yeah, at that point, I'm failing in life. Yeah, right? I didn't want to say it. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I mean, you're rock bottom, and you don't know where to look or what to do. Uh, could you break it down to simply, you know, how am I, what am I going to do next? Where am I going to get my next meal? Where am I going to generate income, money, right? Uh, first thing is a job, clearly. Um, and, and that's just what uh, I decided to do, which was like, hey, you know, whatever I was doing the previous, whether it was, you know, uh, making monies in alternative ways wasn't wasn't working right i got to go back to square one uh and find somewhere to work uh because you know uh, i've worked all my life so it's find somewhere to work get a good job solid bring in some income uh with income i have opportunities right uh so the first thing was to get an income and food uh, and food yeah no doubt and shelter right i mean you never think you're going to be, uh, I never thought I would be in that kind of a situation. I reflect back on it a lot and I don't, you know, uh, I would have wished things were different, but I don't regret it in a sense. It was a huge learning experience for me. And, and I try to, uh, you know, as people say, remember where I came from. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it's a very humbling experience that I, you know, um, I often reflect back to hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that was when it, the turning point when I was like, oh, wow, dude, he's really go is when you got your trucking job at the big company. Yeah. So um, I got on, uh, you know, worked hard. But at that time, um, you know, what was this, 2003, maybe? Um, at two In 2003, it was an old school, which was like, hey, you know, we're, we're taking applicants on this day at this time. Um, I, I showed up there hours early and I was like fourth in line. But they would bring 20, 30 people in. And essentially, if you followed everything that was, you know, necessary, you got the job. But that was a turning point for me because, you know, within, I'd probably say, less than a year, I went from homeless to, you know, making like 60K, you know. And back in 2003 or four, that was great money. I've worked all my life. Uh, you know, I remember throwing papers back when I was three, four years old to help the you know, our household. We, I don't come from a wealthy background. Uh, but, you know, I have a job when I was young, third you know, I'd probably say seven, eight years old, you know, um, and then I got a job as soon as I could, uh, you know, in high school to have, generate some extra income. So I'm a worker. Uh, and that was uh, something that was very different when I was homeless was I was unable to work. And it was kind of crippling because I wanted to work. I just didn't, um, you know, have the resources at the time, if you will. But yeah, a lot of hours, a lot of hours, uh, but making good money. So I didn't care. Uh, you know, making good money. And, and that's just what I knew. And it became stagnant. I got stuck in that. And, and I'm, I was happy, but I became stagnant because it was working, right? Like, like it was for me. It was working for me. Working all the hours was working for me because I saw the end result, which was money. I was making good money. Um, but basically from that job when I was uh, about 20, 21, up until uh, 31, you know, 10 solid years, I worked for... Uh, two companies in that time. One, actually, maybe um, 21 to early 30s, 32 or 3. Um, you know, I was stuck in, in just working. And, and it was after that at about 30 or so where I became lost again. So it was working. I was making good money. Uh, but I was losing myself. I had exceeded my limit in said category or said job, if you will, said industry, right? And how did you identify that you had exceeded that? I became depressed, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I became depressed in the sense that, um, you know, I felt like this was it, right? Like, like, uh, you know, the main thing that got me um, moving, if you will, lit a fire under me was, you know, I, I would go hit that key card on that, hit my badge to get into the building. And I'd see some guys that maybe had been there for 30 years, you know, and it and it, it brought me physical pain. It's like, I can't be that. I won't be that. that that's not going to be me. I can't. That's my personality, yours too. Um, I, I cannot just punch the clock for 30 years and call it a career or a life. That's not going to be me. You know, if people out there love their jobs, um, that, that there's no there's no slack on that. There's no, you know, there's that's not a bad thing for my type, for my personality, from, you know, who I've, 
you know, wanted to be. Uh, I knew that working for somebody else just wasn't going to work for my personality. Yeah, you uh, got to know yourself too. I, I did 10 years working for other people and I loved it. I yeah. just, that was what I thought that I wanted to do until Correct. I got to the point that you're describing where I became depressed, I was yeah. not challenged, I became bored and I was like, man, I am so grateful for where I am, but yeah. I just know that I can do better than this and mm. be happier. Yeah, I'm no, no that. question, no question about it. And, and I think, you know, over time, um, you know, everybody will get to that point. But the, there's a lot of, well, what's next? How, what do I do yeah. next, right? So and, what and, was it for you? Well, that's a million dollar question, right? For me, I just knew that, you know, driving truck, right? Uh, working, phys being physical and, and driving truck um, is, is what I'm good at. Um, so, um, you know, let me do it for myself. Because at the time I, I felt like, hey, you know, and I think at my last job, I, you know, I was, I was touching close to 80,000 a year, working a lot of hours, mind you. But t touching close to eighty thousand a year, I mean that's great money, especially but, twenty years ago. Yeah, it, well, yeah, but when you break it down for yourself, it's like okay, over fifty-two weeks, you know, I can do this myself, right? I can make that much on my own uh, within the, um, you know, within the boundaries of how I want to do it, right? Uh, so my wife was pregnant with our, our first daughter, and I said, hell, you know, I'm just gonna quit my job. So I went out, you know. Uh, Buy myself a truck and decided, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and uh, and, it, and it took me several years in business uh, to figure out how I wanted to do. A lot of failures, a uh, lot of you know, a uh, lot of dead ends, but um, you know, it's it's part of the process. Did you experience fear when you were looking to buy the truck, and then after you bought it, like, oh my gosh, I have a semi truck? Like, what yeah. did any a of lot those thoughts? Of, oh, there's a lot of emotions. Fear was definitely one of them uh, because. You know, in order to grow in life, you you have to put yourself out there. So there's a ton of fear, all the fear, anxiety, doubt, all of the stuff. How did you handle that at the time? Um, well, I, I feel like um, you know I I used it as motivation, right? I used them as tools. All that fear, I would just try to uh, combat with uh, motivation, um, uh, positivity, gratitude. Um, I, I'd use multiple tools, you know, every, every emotion that I had to the negative, I try to combat it with an uh, emotion to the positive. So specifically, like if you felt a, uh, fearful emotion, you would say something positive either out loud or to yourself, or did you write it down or what both. Did the actual, okay. yeah, both, um, you know, I'd have postcards in my truck, um, you know, to, to let myself know first, you know, I named my company after myself, uh, and, and I did, <laughs> well, but I don't know why that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. And that's not, not that's, not, common. A, that's yeah. not an ego thing. But yeah, you're but, not but an ego guy. So it, it was a purpose thing. Me. Right. It was a purpose thing. I, I named the company after myself, or my name is included in the company. And, and the point of doing that was so that, you know, every day I got in the truck, you know, because that time, you know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. So every, t every day I got in the truck, I knew who I was doing it for myself. Right. I, and I did that on purpose. But at any time I felt any fear or, you know, that kind of uh, emotion, I, I would just come equally as hard with the opposite, right? Yin and yang, right? Positivity. You know, today's going to be my best day, right? I like that. And, 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 and that's just, you know, how to attack it. Did you ever say it out loud? Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, dude, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, I've been talking to myself for years. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're a trucker. Yeah, comes but, yeah, it comes with the terror. A lot of time, a lot of, a lot of hours alone. <laughs> Everybody has thoughts in their head. I don't know how many we have 10,000 a day or 60,000 a day. We all have thoughts. But how do you make it real? Right? You make it real by getting a pen, get a piece of paper, putting it down. You can read it. You can stack stick it on the wall. Um, you say it out loud. It, it It's powerful, I feel. You know, it's work. It's been powerful for me, and we should, you know, we should all talk kindly about ourselves. You know, um, I, like I feel like too many people are, uh, you know, you 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 get you get into a negative headspace very easily, and when you get into that low headspace, you know, you you have that doubt, you have that fear. It brings the energy over yourself, brings you to low inertia. Yeah, right? like that's the frequency you're on. Yeah, that's kind of new information. I don't think people until the last 10, 20 years realized how damaging yes. negative self talk is, even as a joke. As like you say, yes. like, oh, I'm just lazy. I've always been yeah. like that. Your self, soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it, does not know that you're joking, no. and it will assimilate that. And all of a sudden, now you're looking for signs in life to validate the negative things you're saying about yourself. 100%. That's, at least it's new for me. No, 100% agreed. And 100% agreed. And it's been like that. And, um, 
you know, uh, you know, just, just simple things, you know, uh, that you can tell yourself, you know, waking up every morning, showing gratitude, right. Just waking up to, and starting the day grateful right? warm for, bed, for, an, yeah, for another house. day. Yes. Yes. You're already, Breathing. you're already starting off ahead, right. Better than most people. And, and, and that doesn't matter if you have a job or you're self-employed, that's just for everybody, you know, uh, starting off grateful. And, and practicing gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude always. Um, but but to wake up and, and tell yourself some kind words, you you will start in a higher uh, frequency vibration. Yeah. You know whatever you know yeah. you want to call it. There's well, gr- gratitude is dopamine. They found out yes. that it actually and it takes a little bit too. You know, at least for me when I started this, I didn't wake up the first day, ten days, twenty days, and I recite things I'm grateful for and feel gratitude. Yes. It's, it's right. a practice. Yes. You get better at it. A hundred percent. I mean, I mean, look, um, you know, you, you don't go to the gym one day and see results. Right. But after a hundred, you're a different, different person. Right. You Good go point. to the gym, you know, a hundred times and, and you look different, you feel different. Same thing. You know, it's not a, it's not a miracle or, uh, you know, get rich quick as they say that, you know, nothing's, nothing's going to happen instantly. I feel it helps me now instantly. I mean, I, I can go from, you know, uh, furious, which I still experience, you know, uh, times of just being frustrated and furious into, you know, go back to baseline, you know, practice your gratitude in a few deep breaths within, you know, a minute or two, I'm fine. Uh, we live in the information age, right? It's all at your fingertips. Um, and you can get so much good information online. Uh, but the problem is I feel like it's the starter, right? The kickstarter, like how do guys get started? And, and that's where you got to just put the videos down, put the put the phones down, and just put action. Right? Action is what creates a reaction. Uh, you know, there's no lazy millionaires, right? They're lazy after they become millionaires, <laughs> but 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 they're not lazy. They earned it. They earned it. Correct. So you know, no matter what it's doing, it, it put the videos down and try something. And it's okay to fail, but but try something. And you know, it may be something that you think you're passionate about, but in in the journey you know, or, or in the process, you find something that you're really passionate about, right? It's whatever makes you, your motor go, right? And whatever fuels your fire. How important do you think the circle of people that you spend time with is? Huge. That's everything. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd say I'm a lone wolf, but I, I don't, I like a small circle. I, I'm not a, you know, uh, I've, n- I've never been, uh, I mean, even, you know, and I think that's why I struggled so much, you know, in school. I'm not a popular kind of guy, right? Like, like it's not a, whether I was or not, it, it was like, I'm not good at popularity contests, right? Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that or be that, you know, you so, don't see value there. Yeah. I don't see value there. Um, so, so in, in who you spend the majority of your time with, you could probably say you're going to end up like them or you're going to be stuck there. That's where the stagnant comes in. Right. And I, and, and that was, that, that still is a big problem for me. Uh, because I know, um, that that's, you know, going to elevate myself in my situation. That's another thing <clears throat> too, that I don't think is talked about. Like, Hey, you want to hang out with the winners. You have to become a winner and you don't have to be successful before yes. you become the person that can be Correct. successful. So yeah. if you're expecting to hang out with super high vibrational people, as they would yes. say, or the winners, you can't be someone who's like not showering and not brushing your teeth. You have to become the person that you're trying to be and then it will come to you. Yes, absolutely. hundred percent. Uh, and to go on top of the showering and the brushing the teeth (laughs) is is more just up. You have to be positive. You have to be uplifting. Another thing too, is asking for help is I, for me, it was very, very crucial. I would go find people who were where I wanted to be. And I could tell they were actually where I wanted to be, not just saying they were. And I was shocked at how many super successful people were no no hesitation yes. willing to just meet with me and give me all this knowledge. Yes. And people, because there's a thing people say, oh, you got to know people to get somewhere. Oh, he just was really connected. We all know people. Yes. And we all know dads who's a friend of a friend who's successful. You can literally cold call them and say, hey, I'm trying to better myself. Here's what I'm thinking of doing. You think we can get some coffee and I can ask you some questions about how you got where you are. 99% of the time, the people that you think would have no time for you will say yes. Ab- uh, uh, no question about it because, you know, winners want to see other people win, right? My experience uh, with wealthy people or people who have gotten to a certain level is they're willing to share, but also they didn't get there by being lazy. So they're not going to allow you to be lazy to get there. Yeah, they're not a shortcut. They're, yeah, they're exactly. So so that's what I mean is people aren't just going to share, you know, they're not just going to give you the book of secrets. But 
they will reward you if you come with the right questions or you know you have the right intent and they can smell it there's there's yeah. they're smart individuals right so you know they're, they're not going to give up the goods on what necessarily they're doing or is working for them but they will give you valuable tidbits you know they're not going to do the work for you they're not going to do the work for yeah. you but 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 they will definitely assist you're 100 percent in in, in right it, they, they they will and they do uh but but they're not going to do the work for you so you, you have to be prepared and you have to you know think long and hard of it it's not just like you know hey how do i become what you are yeah right like hey i, I want to start a snowmobiling company here's the information i have thus far mm -hmm. how do i get a bank loan for this correct what's the how do i work with the county to yes. get permits who, is there anyone you know in this industry that you can plug me in and yes. maybe give me a, like real specific questions? Specific. They see, oh, he's actually trying to do this. Yes. He just wants you know information from me. Correct. They're usually willing to give it. You have to make sure you're asking the right questions to get the answers that you're looking for. You know, just just asking how do I become a millionaire? I mean, you know, that's not going to help you. Nah, you can YouTube that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right on, but, man. Yeah, but you need you, you know being well uh, rehearsed prior to you know. Uh, asking for the right questions is definitely, definitely key. Well, dude, thanks for giving all this information, man. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You this bet. was fun and great. And I think people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, anyone looking to, anyone who's depressed and yeah. might not even realize it's because they don't like what they do for a living, I think this is going to touch them. So. No doubt. You got it.